I'm almost 34, I'm single, and it seems like everyone in my family has become hyper-obsessed about when I will get married and have children. Everyone except me. I've had a lot of success in my career, and that has really been my main priority. The people that are most concerned about my single status are my two grandmothers. My Ethiopian grandmother wonders if a curse has affected my dating prospects. And my Canadian grandmother constantly questions me about any potential men I may have met. Let me back up. My grandmothers first met at Christmas in 1978, in the early days of my parents' short-lived marriage. They really haven't seen each other since then, but because of their shared connection in me, they've kept in touch through letters. They're hoping to see each other for some big event, like say my wedding. Since that isn't in the cards anytime soon, I'm planning to reunite them. They're both getting older, and I'm not sure how much more time I'll have with them. I'm also hoping to understand why they want me to get married so badly. I begin my journey with a visit to Grandma Rose, my mother's mom in Ottawa, Canada. After my parents divorced, when I was about six months old, my mom and I went to live with my grandparents. Despite our 50-year age gap and different upbringings, as young women, my grandmother and I were pretty similar. After high school, like me, she escaped to the big city to chase after her dreams. Also like me, she worked in the music industry. I was fortunate to work in radio for nine years. I thought what an exciting place this would be to work, full of music, exciting people. I had dated uh, a lot of um, radio people. They were all flirts. They all had big egos. I had to be very careful not going on too many dates with any one of them. They were fast guys. You think people are too fast now? After 80, you're not very fast. <laughs> they all need walkers. <laughs> Grandma doesn't want me to date any fast men. She prefers a man like her favorite celebrity. I would like you to meet a nice man like Bon Jovi, sure, with a heart and good-looking, cute. <laughs> and what are the other criteria? They treat you well, the way I was treated. My grandparents met as they worked in the same building. My grandfather took a photo of her for the newspaper, which made the front page. I stayed there in radio for about two years after I was married because I became pregnant. At that time, you could not work. I was very sad. I was hoping to continue, but uh, those were different times. Giving up my career, having kids, and becoming a homemaker is not something I could imagine doing. I enjoy my life. I have the freedom to take jobs anywhere in the world and to travel without having to lug around a stroller. Regardless, my mother and my aunt want me to settle down. Grandma's gonna have them over for a proper tea party. This will be a great opportunity to chat. Both of you got divorced, so it's like, how great can marriage really be? I got married for the wrong reasons. What were the reasons, though? I thought I needed to get married. I thought I had to marry him. Why did you think that? Because I'd slept with him. And how did he achieve and that? In, in that, he was attractive. <laughs> he was attractive. We he were was both charming. young. He was charming, he was charming. and, and young, handsome. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was young. Did I was you 21 when I met your dad. I think the longer that you're alone as a single woman, uh, the harder it's going to be to even entertain the possibility of giving up your work because to you, it's, I think your work is a huge part of who you are. At the same time, I want you to have a complete life 
And to me, that embraces family. It's just not being alone. I don't think anyone should have to be alone. Everyone is better with someone who's there for them. I can't imagine getting married to the first guy I slept with. That isn't really something that happens anymore. I think there's a perception that I'm single because I'm too picky, or that maybe I'm secretly dating one of my male friends, or that I'm somehow anti-man. Nope, I'm just looking for my special person, and I'm not gonna settle for just anyone who shows up. The other person who's been a huge influence in my life is my Ethiopian grandmother, Mama Sahai. In Mama's day, if you were from a good Catholic family like hers, and you were young and beautiful, you would get married. Right after boarding school, she got married at the age of 17. My grandfather was a diplomat in the government of Emperor Haile Selassie. So Mama raised her family, my dad and my aunts, abroad in Sudan, Nigeria, Ghana, and Canada. As soon as I was alone with Mama, she wanted to remind me that I was wasting my time being single. Anyone is small, it's beautiful, anything. After 35 or 40, like good flower for you. Do you know how old I am? No. I'm 34. Yeah. What do you think of that? Get married. If you are happy, you can stay. If you are not happy, you say bye-bye. But you have child, one or two. I went to church with Mama, which thrilled her to no end. She said she spent the entire service asking God to send me a husband before I get too old. I'm not sure how anyone in this family can believe in marriage. We only have one successful marriage among the aunts and the rest are all divorced. Mama thinks there's a curse on our family, a curse that is keeping everyone single. Given this, asking my aunts for advice on relationships may not be the best idea. What advice do you have to get a man? Mom is seriously considering it. That's the funny part. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you intend to project, but that's what I receive. It's like working is more important, and never mind these other things. We just got these men and we use them to get kids, and then. Oh, and then that's no. what you would have tomorrow. No, no, no. <laughs> let, me, let me say something. Mm -hmm. We were raised to divorce if we're not happy. Um, when I told my mom I was divorcing, she said, you're not happy. I said, I'm not happy. She goes, divorce? I think a child is more important than a husband. <laughs> for me. Yeah. Because it's something you bring into this world. If you forego marriage, but still have the, a child, I think it's fantastic. But that's been mama's suggestion. She yeah. told me to go to a nightclub and get knocked up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mama used to tell me the same thing. And I would tease her and say, tonight I'm going to go out and have sex and then have a child. So I hear what you're saying. It's not marriage, I think, that any of us are talking about. It's just finding Companion. a friend. 
good companion. And sexual benefits. This is your advice. No, oh, it's important. They gave me the same advice. I wish you do it. So it seems with the family in Ethiopia, the most important thing is for me to have a child. Going to a club and looking to hook up? Not likely. To be honest, I'm really not interested in having a child as a single mom, despite my family's DIY approach to parenting. I've arranged to bring Mama back to Canada with me for a visit. However, now that we're en route, I'm worried that bringing my two grandmothers together will just unite them in their pressuring of me and praying for a holy intervention. House. We think alike, don't we? Yeah. We're sisters at a distance. Great. Far apart, but we're close. Very close. <laughs> really. I treasure we're not joking. my friendship with you. From our heart, we love you. We love all the family. But God didn't help us. We pray for her, and she can get good husband I wish for her. Mm. One son or daughter you must have. Yeah. Tamara, I beg you. I appreciate the wisdom, advice, and even the nagging from my grandmothers. I know they're just trying to help. But I also know that it's okay for me to be happy with my life, even if it doesn't fit my family's views of normality. I'm not feeling desperate or depressed that I'm not married. And it's really unfortunate that some people feel like that. Still, talking to my grandmothers about their relationships has made me realize that I totally have poor choice in men. I always choose men who are like projects, men who need me more than I need them. And so they end up getting more than they're giving. I now know that that was not love because those relationships were not balanced. I'm not gonna project any expectations of what should happen next in my life. <laughs> if anything, I'm looking for love, not for marriage. Give us something to gossip about, okay? Yeah. Something juicy. Something juicy? What's that <laughs> supposed to mean? Romance. Settling down is not detrimental to my life or even remotely important to me. But romance is great if it happens. In fact, it's probably fantastic. I'm not saying I'm promising to have a husband, but that would be the next reason you would ever visit if I got married. Yeah, yeah. I'm not making get, any I promises. I think we need to get that in writing <laughs> and would... notarized by Listen, a lawyer. You get a husband and I'll go with you. <laughs> you'll, go, you'll go with me where? Yeah. Wherever you're going. Oh. <laughs>